Well, good. I think it's good afternoon. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me here. It's been a while since um, I've addressed an ombudsman council, and the society and the ombudsman, ombudsman at the commands work so closely together that um, I really do appreciate the opportunity um, of coming here and talking to you about it. Does anybody in here not have not heard of Navy Marine Corps leave? Well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> that makes life easier. Um, I'm the director for the office at the Washington Navy Yard. So for most of you who are represented here, that's really the office where you would, or the people from your command would seek assistance. Um, we do have offices all throughout the region. Um, we have them in Bethesda, Fort Meade, Annapolis, um, Dahlgren, so really here in the metro area, we're, we're very spread out pretty evenly. Uh, Pax River has their own office. So there really is kind of an ease to be able to seek assistance from us. But it sounds like from what I heard, the commands represented that really the Navy Yard is, is kind of like your central location. Um, Navy Marine Corps Relief is a private nonprofit. Okay, we are not a part of the government, we are not a part of the Department of the Navy, we are a separate entity. We do receive lots of help from the Navy, they provide our infrastructure. Um, we are a volunteer-based organization, so um, in this area, the region that I represent, um, from my seven offices and three thrift shops, um, from New Jersey down to Wallops Island, there's myself and a part-time employee, which, oh, by the way, the job is open. If anybody is looking for a 32-hour, no, no. <laughs> um, a 32, it's 32 hours a week. Um, you can apply on the website, through the website at www.nmcrs.org. Um, so please pass that around. You might have um, spouses that are looking for a part-time job, and we have a lot of fun. So, and it is on the Navy Yard, so and we have parking. <laughs> it's very important for those of you who have never been to the Navy Yard. Uh, <laughs> Master's going, uh-huh. Um, but it's myself and a part-time employee and 170 volunteers that provide the services that I'm about to talk to you about today. Without our volunteers, we would be unable to provide the services that we do. Um, the, we've been around for 113 years. All 113 of them have been on the Washington Navy Yard. We were one of the first offices. Um, so we have a long history um, in this region. Our first president was the spouse of the Commandant, Washington Navy Yard. Uh, so there is a long history, and we have been on the Navy Yard continuously throughout that. There's also a thrift shop here on JBAB. Now, there's two thrift shops on JBAB. There's the one that's right by here with the, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be Fleet and Family Till I Die, Fleet and Family. <laughs> um, but then over on the Navy side of the base, it will always be the Air Force and Navy side of the base, um, in Enterprise Hall, we also have a thrift shop there. And that's actually run by Navy Marine Corps Relief Society. Um, tons of uniforms. Uh, what's your jacket cost? This Eisenhower? Uh huh. Oh, seventy-five dollars. Yeah, we sell them for fifteen. Oh wow. <laughs> when we have them. Oh wow. Yep. Yep. Skipper skipper. So, what's the blouse cost, Master Chief? Retail. What's that? Oh, this. Sure. This, this whole outfit was seventy-five and fifty-five. So. Three dollars. Yeah. Hello! <laughs> the most expensive uniform item we have are the peat coats and bridge coats. Um, and they sell for about $35, $40. Bucks. Oh, man. that's good. That's $200 new. Yeah. Um, don't come looking for the new Gore Tex jacket. We don't have any. <laughs> okay. um, so, absolutely, uniform items. We only sell to active duty. So, it would be the active duty service member would have to come in and make the purchase. We also sell to reservists. I heard somebody here from FRC. Um, the reservists can come in and utilize the thrift shop as well. Uh, 
on the financial side of the house, which is probably a bulk of what most people know us for, our interest-free loans and grants. We help with rent, utilities, communication, whatever form of communication that is, whether it be a landline, a cell phone. We help with cable and internet. Um, we help with household setups. We help with utility deposits. We do get a lot of junior people here, surprisingly enough, who have never had apartments and they have security deposits and things because they can't get into housing or don't want to move into housing for whatever reason. So we can help with all of that stuff, the security deposits both for where they're moving into as well as the utilities. Um, we help with child care. Now, not on a continuous basis, but you know, sometimes life comes up and kicks us all. And maybe this month I can't meet that child care bill. Well, that's something that we can help with. Um, we can help with medical and dental co-pays. It's really kind of nice not talking to an all active duty audience because they go, well, my medical and dental are <laughs> paid for. Yeah, well, your family's is not 100%, unfortunately. And we also assist with retirees. And they kind of fall, once you're no longer active duty, for those of you still in uniform, once you're out of that uniform, you fall just like the military dependents or family members. Okay, so we help with all of that. EFMP, there are things that sometimes just aren't covered. First of all, we're going to make sure that you're hooked up to all the programs that are available to you, but you know, sometimes you need to purchase something that isn't paid for, and we can help with that. Transportation, pretty much everything to do with a car except we're not buying you one, okay? <laughs> so the 0% interest doesn't go to a brand new car. That, that's not going to happen. But we do help with car payments if for some reason you can't make your car payment. Insurance, registration, driver's licenses, um, insurance deductibles, I see puzzlement. There are states where they only give junior driver's licenses until the age of 18, and then here they come at 18 and a half after boot camp, and they don't have a valid driver's license. Okay, happens all the time. So registering the vehicle, all the insurance, we want that car legal, safe on the road. Car repairs, they're expensive. You know, I remember many, many, many years ago when I first drove a car, brakes weren't that bad. It was 50, 60, 70 bucks. Yeah, I just did brakes on my car with calipers last week. It was $2,000. Mm. I was so happy when he called me. So that kind of stuff, it happens. We have people here with insurance deductibles in order to be able to meet the insurance requirements for this area, which are very expensive. They've got a thousand, fifteen hundred dollar deductibles, and then they get in a car wreck. Okay, and they don't have that thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. So we're, we can help with that. Um, emergency travel. I think most people understand that we do help um, families and service members get out on emergency leave. We define emergency leave in a much broader um, framework than the Navy does. So, for the Navy, if you active duty, what's an emergency leave? Death or illness of whom? Immediate family. Immediate family. Okay. We also recognize that grandparents, grandchildren, sometimes it's an aunt or an uncle who's very close. The one I bring up that happens more times than I wish it did with our very junior is this is their first duty station and their friends went off to college or whatever, they come home for break and unfortunately the command has to give them news that their best friend since kindergarten was just killed in a car crash. Okay, happens. And we're going to consider that an emergency. As with the command's concurrence, with leave paperwork, we will get them out. They t get expedited service. That means you have your leave approved, you have an ID card, we can verify the emergency, there's no appointment necessary, you walk in the door and we will get you out. Okay? We can also help with funerals for family members. 
okay? Food, gasoline, the basic essentials of life, the kinds of stuff that we don't normally, normally and generally, because everything I tell you that we don't do, we probably have at one point or another. So we don't normally pay credit cards, okay? Really the only form of consumer debt we normally pay are the car notes, okay? Car payments, we don't want a car repo. Oh, I can help you get a car out of repo too. As long as it wasn't legally driven. In other words, I'm not gonna help you get your car out of repo because you got a DUI. But if you didn't come to us for those car payments that I just told you that we could help with when they come and get the car, we can help you get the car out of repo. Okay. Um, so those, that consumer debt is not normally something we do, but we do do budgets okay, all the time. It's our bread and butter. Whatever case they're coming in on, except for those emergency leaves, we're going to do a budget with that, with that service member, the spouse or service family, and sit down and have a long heart to heart with them. This is, this is the money coming in, folks. This is the money going out. Here's your bottom line. Here's some resources. Were you aware of military discounts? And the people in this room may say, well, yeah, but again, not that 19, 20-year-old. They don't know that the cell phone that they've had since they were 16 can now have a military discount attached to it. They don't know about um, the Service Members Relief Act for any debt they came into the military with. I mean, so we, we help them and guide them and give them resources. One of the good things about our budgeting is, is we say, well, if we're at Navy Marine Corps Relief stays at Navy Marine Corps Relief. So when you come in and you do a budget with us, the command is not involved. The command is not involved without the service member's permission. That's not to say that at some point we might not look at the service member and go, we really need to get the command involved. Okay? They're going to be help, able to help you more than we can. So it's not that we have an adversarial relationship, not at all with the command structure, but your day-to-day -day coming in, getting a budget done, that's between the society and the service members that, that they are helping. Um, they can come in and just do a budget with us. We love it when that happens. People new to the area. This is a very expensive place to live. And we have a lot of people coming in from, well, I came in from fill in the blank overseas, and yeah, well, you had cola there. <laughs> you don't have cola here. Okay? We came in from Japan. That was um, our, to D.C. from Japan. And the cost of living really wasn't any different, but I no cola. So it was an adjustment. Um, we teach a budget for baby class. What is this new bundle of joy going to cost? Okay? Whether it's your first new bundle of joy or your seventh, I don't care, it's open. Babies are the great equalizer. It doesn't matter what your rank is. Babies are expensive, okay? So we talk about the financial aspects of that, which is very different than what the new parent support team does. We're talking about financially, what are the scams that are still out there? Where can you get resources? Where are there some maybe military discounts that you were unaware of? Um, we do this one-on-one -on -one in the office or we teach it by the class. Okay, so you can come in and take a class, be with a bunch of other people who are in the same boat you are, or you can come in and do a one-on-one -on -one, depending on what the schedule is. We do really like it if both parents come. This is a group effort. Okay. <laughs> So we do want to talk about that, yes. um, but it's not necessary. Either the spouse or the service member can come in, or if it's dual active duty, just one of the active duty come in. And, and the little gifts that we give or the bribe to try and get them to come in the door is we used to call it a junior sea bag. I kind of liked that. Well, we've gone away from that. Now they're called um, layettes, but I, I kind of like that little junior sea bag thing. Um, it's really, it's kind of a baby starter kit. It's um, a bunch of items from Gerber. There's crib sheets and blankets and onesies and bibs and mittens and socks. 
And kind of all this stuff that you need four million of, we kind of give you a couple of each. <laughs> and then a handmade blanket made by our volunteers. And it's one per baby. Okay, it's, it's really great. And we love getting the pictures of the baby all wrapped up in their blanket. And we send it back to the knitters and stuff. So um, it is a great program. For the last year, we now, in this region, for the first time, have a mommy and me nurse. Okay, it's called, we call them visiting nurses. Um, Ann Donahue is her name. Please get it out there. She is a licensed certified pediatric nurse practitioner. Okay, she currently works 30 hours a week. And remember I said visiting nurse? She goes to you. It's not another appointment. She's also a lactation expert, certified. So for new moms who are having issues with that side of the house, she'll come out, she'll do well baby checks in the home. Um, this is a service that has to be asked for by the person who wants the service. Okay, so if you as the ombudsman call and say, you know, I have a family member, Jane Jones, who really needs some help, Jane has to contact us because it's medical. Okay? HIPAA applies. I have no idea who she goes and sees. I know how many people she sees. I know the general area where she is, so they don't have to call out the police.